with two points that Phil Hogan was making that I thought uh, were interesting. On the environmental impact, he was talking about rhetoric and reality. He was pointing out the matrices, the graphs were falling down and not meeting, the risk of fines, uh, the EPA warnings, the greenhouse gas levels still above that of 1990. Now, I know uh, we're doing um, more on that in the afternoon, but Brendan, what was interesting was the point the minister was putting on, there is a price on all of this. There is a real hard cash economic price on all of this, and if you're not careful, you'll be paying it. Yeah, well, I think there are two issues. I mean, that's one, and the commissioner made a very forceful point this morning, and he chose a good environment to do that in, I think. Um, so that's a, that's a point, there's a price to pay. The second thing is, I think, if we want public support for the continuation of the Common Agricultural Policy, Consumers and taxpayers across Europe have to be convinced that there is a public good uh, delivery. Now, of course, there are 44 million jobs associated with this industry. Uh, but a lot is already being done, uh, and uh, at the risk of repetition, uh, in the agri-food sector in Ireland, emissions have come down between 2009 and 2015 against the background of dramatic increase in production. So that is an amazing uh, achievement. Uh, uh, absolutely, and I, I, uh, it's just that you know, it, we all know it's not enough. And we all know the people you're going to be negotiating with don't see it as being enough and they want more from us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I suppose we've moved on now from, from the, the time when we can say, well, um, you know, uh, maybe the right deal wasn't done. Yeah. Or, I mean, the fact is now we have targets and the agri-food sector has to play its part in achieving those targets. Uh, and the state can do its part and the European Union can do its part by configuring a policy that helps people to reach those targets. And farmers, in my view, are interested in this. But of course, they have to be remunerated for their efforts if, to make a, if they're to make a, a real difference. And I think that, that's the point. And we can configure a common agricultural policy to help with this. But it's, it's something that is required at all stages of the supply chain. And that's the important of, importance of initiatives like Origin Green, uh, because I think it kind of sucks people in right throughout the supply chain into this effort to, to uh, reduce emissions, to improve the, uh, the uh, contribution yeah. to the environment. And of course, if we had perfection, we wouldn't need to do these things. Uh, the point is, we are on a journey here. Um, that's a cliche, but it's true. Uh, but we have to get better at it. Carmel. Um, so the commissioner, he, he talked about two things. He talked about subsidiarity, but he also talked about um, payments that were based on results. And so those two things together, I think, um, mean that the policy really can be turned around in order to get farmers to do the things that will produce the results in this environment with this kind of production system. So I think there are really big uh, opportunities there. But there's another part of it, and I don't think the word has been used yet this morning, or maybe it was and I didn't hear it, but innovation broadly defined, is enormously important here. Now, innovation costs money, so money has to be found for innovation too. But everything from uh, the, the targeted research that will provide the solutions, again, in this environment, which will be different from the solutions in any other environment, all the way down to a rethinking of extension services. You know, remember old-fashioned extension services. We need to think about how the knowledge that's generated at the top of the innovation system and research can get all the way down to the farmers who are going to have to take the actions that will mean that uh, you know, those uh, ecosystem services will be supplied and that uh, Ireland will be able to meet its climate change targets. So, um, I mean, that's, that's another you know, area where maybe you know, some of these monies are going to have to be shifted around because innovation is probably the, the, the key thing for the future. Yeah. Joe, yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say that, you know, and I have said, there's more that farmers can do, but the figures have been put out here already. Uh, we've increased our output by 40%, yet we've reduced uh, our carbon emissions by about 6%. Compare that to the transport industry. And I think rather than, rather than paying fines, uh, we need better government policy in relation to invest in that money that we otherwise will pay in fines, invest in it in uh, renewable energy measures, and there's a lot more work that can be done there. We've seen in the IFA. Right. No, but we've seen in the IFA. No, I'm running the smart, out of time, and I want to give John 30 seconds. But the smart farming initiative that has shown a win-win 
uh, in relation to reducing okay. carbon emissions while increasing farm profits. But, you know, we need support in that line. Okay, you've 20 seconds do, do you, there, John. To use that awful phrase on you, we are where you are. I think Brendan... I was going to say a lot more, more to do, a lot done more to <laughs> no, do. No, but to, 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 to acknowledge what Brendan said, we are where we are and we have to accept the reality. But I want to put this point on the record. It flies in the face of common sense, the deal that has been done in terms of our efficiencies. And as a society, we need to put that on the record because civil society misrepresented leads to the types of Brexit. And the final, final point is the Commissioner referred to Holland. We have a lot of opportunity here before we get to the Dutch situation. They do about 11 billion litres of milk. They have an awful lot of pigs and they're about the size of Munster. We're at 7 billion litres of milk. We can expand okay. incrementally in a sustainable way if we all, as an industry, work together. I'm over time. It's been a fascinating conversation. Will you give our panel a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen?